When a plane engine fails, there's no time for questions about how or why. Minutes, even seconds, can mean the difference between life and death. You're about to see an amazing video of what it was like for the nine passengers on board a tiny plane headed to Honolulu just a few weeks ago when an emergency landing on the water led to a race to get out alive. Here's ABC's David Wright. Two minutes after takeoff, a sudden loss of power. The engines of this Cessna Grand Caravan, a puddle jumper headed to Honolulu, inexplicably stopped. Engine just made a, made a sound and, and then it just, just happened, you know, you just realize at that moment what was going on. All nine people on board know they're about to crash, but listen, not a peep from the passengers. There were no screaming, no one panicked. Ferdinand Puentes in seat 4B was rolling the whole time. I was thinking, is this like for real? The only sound, a cockpit alarm. And I looked, looked outside in the window and I seen that the ocean was just was coming pretty fast. We just hit, and in that split second, first thing I did was look for my life vest. Life jacket. So I was there just fumbling, trying to get it open. It happened so fast. Watch as the floor immediately starts to fill up with water. Water just filled our feet up to our ankles. The sound is muffled because the camera is inside a watertight mount meant for snorkeling, which turns out to be just the right thing. The camera still rolling as everyone makes their escape. 324, less than two minutes after the crash, they're all out. Everybody okay? Miraculously, all nine people on board survived the crash itself. No, and the wing was right there. I figured everyone was rushing as fast as I did. So I just kept on going up to the end of the, the wing and make sure that there was room for the other passenger. Once in the water, Puentes and the others grabbed for any piece of debris they could find. The first person that was behind me, she, she cried for help because she didn't have her life, life vest on. So. That passenger, Rosa Key, from 3A, was struggling. Water was rough, so everybody was kind of Pilot was trying to get everybody together, but that's kind of impossible because of the waves. Still, everyone is remarkably calm. I was still in shock, like, this is happening still, you know, when am I going to wake up? He managed to capture this epic selfie before his camera finally ran out of batteries. It is that fifth time stop, and everything that you remembered in your past, your loved ones and everything, you know, it's... No, I didn't say say goodbye to them. You know, it's just for the, even that split, you know, like nanosecond. It just that time stop, and your whole life just goes in front of you. The plane itself stayed afloat another 25 minutes. Everybody, let's go. Head to shore. The passengers stranded in the water for another hour after that. In that time, one of them actually swam back to shore, hoping to signal for help. By that time, the rescuers had finally arrived. The helicopter came by and, you know, it, it was headed to my direction with the rescue swimmer in this cargo net type basket thing. And he just came in, came within a few feet of me, extended out his hand, and he just just pulled me in because I was exhausted. For all but one of the nine people on board, this was a near-death experience. Loretta Fuddy in seat 2A wasn't so lucky. She survived the crash, but struggled to tread water, at one point grabbing hold of another passenger's hand. She was paddling with her feet, you know, she wasn't exactly relaxed. At some stage, uh, she had let go his hand, probably she had it gripped tightly, and she let go his hand, and uh, he must have tried to see if he could get a response from her, but she had, uh, there was no response from that time on. Fuddy was a local celebrity, Hawaii's health director. In 2011, she found herself at the center of the uproar over President Obama's birth certificate. She ultimately released the document.
The fact that she was the lone fatality briefly became fodder for conspiracy theorists. But this new video may well go a long way to putting that to rest. In fact, what makes this case so unusual is the fact that Ferdinand Puentes captured the crash on camera, as well as the aftermath. Survival experts say they did everything right. Most importantly, they stayed calm. They followed the safety procedures. Everyone wearing a seatbelt, everyone grabbing a life vest on the way out. And they clearly knew where the exits were. Those simple procedures are how the overwhelming majority, upwards of 90%, managed to survive plane crashes. Even on jumbo jets, like the Asiana flight that crashed at SFO last year or the U.S. Airways shuttle that landed on the Hudson River five years ago. The miracle on the Hudson, they called it. In that flight, as in this one, the survival rate owed a lot to the skills of the pilot and the steady nerves of the passengers. It's GoPro running you know, all the time, and so I had it on this GoPro stick and just held on to it. You know. He says he had his camera ready because he wanted to document his trip to the island. So I took a picture of us landing there and I was gonna make, make a story. So I figured, you know, I'll take the video of us taking off also. So just as I took the video and we were taking off, just as soon as I turned off the camera within a couple seconds, a few seconds, that, that noise of the plane's engine just, just happened. So I just turned it back on and made sure it was on and I just kept on rolling. Little did he know what a story he captured. I guess I'm choosing to try to relive it in my mind and so I can get used to the feeling and just overcome it. And, you know, once you get used to it, you know, it's, you can, like, put it away. So that's, I guess that's how I'm coping with it. That's how I'm, I'm healing with it. A splash landing these passengers will never forget. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Los Angeles.